Hey everybody, Jeff here and welcome back to the channel. Let me ask you a question. Do you have cracked tiles on the floor of your shower? Well, if you do, in today's video, we're going to show you how to fix this engineering disaster and how to install all of these beautiful river rock tiles and really make your bathroom come to life. And it all starts right now. Because this video is such a detailed DIY masterclass on doing this tiling, we have a table of contents for you in the video description down below, and you can jump to any chapter by clicking on the timestamps. played with just kind of putting some sheets down to see how it's going to look. It's going to come out nice, I think. Now as we look at the condition of the floor, see these craters like these, these are going to have to be filled in. You can see them all over the place there. Because when I'm putting down tile, I like to have a nice smooth surface to lay the tiles down onto and identify areas where there could be problems like, you see this right here? That's because underneath there, there's probably a crater, because I think that's what caused, yeah, see? That's what caused the previous tiles to crack. So let me slide this out of the way here and move this out of the way. So you can see there's craters going on all over the place there. And this is the fault of the builder when they first laid this, when they first made the tile floor here. The tiles were the same tiles here. And you can't put a four inch tile over large craters like that and not expect it to crack. So that's what happened. They had several cracks in the tiles leading all the way up here because the builder didn't make sure they had a nice, perfectly smooth shower pan here. I mean, it sloped okay. They made the slope okay, but it was just rough and bumpy and cratered. And so that's why they ended up with cracks. So we have to fill those in with a skim coat that I'm going to do here real quick because um, I want to make sure I have a nice smooth surface to put all of the these tiles down on. So when I lay them down, it should feel like you're laying them down on a flat floor like this. to see now that it's been all vacuumed and cleaned off so you can see how by leaving these craters here that the builder caused cracks to eventually appear in their tiles and it, it this is why you would definitely not want to have this with river rock because you can see it's going to make it just shear right off so all of these got to get filled in and look at this see, especially right up by here you're going to get cracks right by there if all of that isn't filled in nice and flat we don't want to fill it in too much because we have to leave enough height on this drain for the river rocks and for the mortar that they rest in. So when we go to mortar the floor for the river rock here, this has to be up above the top of the drain here so that the water drains down over to the drain. You don't want it to look like this, for example. This is what I've seen people do in the past. 
that would be bad right there. So you want to be able to get this nice and flat first and let it dry overnight and then we'll come in and trowel in our thin set mortar and then put the river rocks on top and they should come in just like that just slightly above the edge of the drain lid right there so that you know all water will drain down onto the drain and into the drain you don't want water bunching up right here and then spilling back into the shower pan floor area and staying there and never drying okay now these are the little details that unfortunately even the professionals some people that call themselves professionals don't do so you might not notice this detail but let me show you this this is a important learning lesson right here so see how you have that sort of it dips back down in the corner and watch what happens to the river rock there see if i was to mount that river rock just right there it's going backwards it's flowing backwards right there it's not allowing the water to slant towards the drain like it's supposed to be so that's why we want to fill in that crater too that little dip there backwards dip see right there that last inch and a half there towards the wall is where it dips back to the wall. So we have to fill in all those things and we have to fill in all of these too. I want this thing to look nice and smooth before we put our tiles on. And you're probably wondering, why is he spending so much time harping on it? Hey, it's the basics, folks. If you don't have your subfloor and everything else, your slope nice and smooth and perfect, your tiles aren't going to be perfect. Another big dip right there too. Let's look at the opposite corner here. Not too bad. Got a big crater right there. You can see some of my round marks here where I took my angle grinder and I had to grind down some of the leftover thin set from the previous tiles to try to get it a little bit of a head start on getting it into a smooth floor. All right, so here's the thin set mortar we're using. We're using the Schluter All Set. And I've been using this the last few years since it came out. This is pretty good because it's a specialized modified mortar. And you can use this on any of the Schluter products or any, any substrate that needs a modified or an unmodified. So you don't have to keep playing that guessing game. Hey, do I need modified or do I need unmodified? So that's why they call it All Set because you're all set. You don't have to worry about it. No thinking involved. And I always make sure to get white. And so what I did here is I got this concrete bonding and adhesive and acrylic fortifier. And um, instead of rolling the this down first as a primer, what I did was I decided we'll just mix it in with the mortar because the manufacturer says you can do that. Here's our consistency here, which I like. It's a little bit more loose than you would normally make it, which is good because this will help you trowel it down and skim it down nice and thin. So here you can see just how deep those craters are there. And same with this one over here. Okay, so we're just going to start dumping some of it out here along these back walls here. And then we're going to trowel it out nice and flat like a skim coat. Okay, so now looking, we've got it about three quarters of the way done. We've got our skim coat put in and it's pretty flat there. Remember, flat doesn't mean level. It's still sloped down into the drain, but uh, it's reasonably flat. Some little marks and stuff, that won't be a problem. And if they are, we'll just sand them down. But remember, we're going to use this. Now will become our new surface to install these new river rock tiles in the morning. So we're going to take these river rocks here and we're going to comb out some thin set mortar 
on top of this dried surface tomorrow. And so the river rocks will set down on top of that about an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch thick combed out lines of the mortar. Okay, so there is the finished product. It's all nicely coated. We didn't quite have enough material to get to the very corner here. That's fine, that was nice and smooth there anyway. Our problem areas were all around the drain and going up to the back wall. All right, now you can see the benefit of why we went through all that trouble to make that nice smooth skim coat. Because now I have a perfectly flat floor to lay this down on, right? And so now as I push this up into the corner here, you can see we're not dipping back. We're starting out at a downward angle, a nice downward slope that leads straight down to the drain. And notice how none of these rocks here are moving or wiggling because they're laying smack down flat. And when you go to put the next sheet next to it here for the dry fitting, fitting in perfectly, and notice how everything's laying flat. Look at this. None of these rocks are really wiggling and bouncing around like you saw yesterday. So these will not be able to snap in half when you're stepping on them. Okay, so it's so important here to get these all dry fitted first because each sheet has its own little personality and they're all different. And you wanna make sure that they look good right now when it's dry and make sure that everything's fine, that they'll fit. Otherwise you have to try to maybe another sheet to see if another sheet fits better. And I start to identify if there's any major holes, like I have a couple here that I have to decide, do I wanna to try to cut a couple of rocks that might be tiny and fit in there or do I wanna leave it as grout? And you want to make sure that they unfold and that they all lay flat, that there's nothing. Because sometimes even the manufacturer screws up. They'll put two stones too close together on the sheet. And you want to make sure they're going to go down and lay down flat. All of these need to fit, but they, they shouldn't be butting up against each other really hard and keeping them from laying flat. And then you got a broken stone here. Don't throw anything away because even your broken stones can be cut down into smaller stones. And now I've got the river rocks laid out here. And so to cut your river rock tiles on a mosaic sheet like this, see, they're gonna be flimsy. So you wanna lay them out flat, make sure they're nice and comfortable and that the whole thing is completely laying out flat as though it's a regular flat tile. Okay, and I have our pencil mark is right here, coming down the line here. So we're going to cut these river rocks along this. And it's pretty easy to cut. Don't worry about it getting binded up or bunching. It's not really going to happen. You keep it flat and you keep your hands on both sides of the line like that. It's pretty much going to do a pretty good job because this blade spins very fast and it's going to cut through this like butter. So I'm going to put my earmuffs on here for safety. And let's go ahead and crank around.
Normally with our drain, the best way to cut the hole and get a hole saw and drill your hole right through the, the sheet. I mean, you would mark it here and take it outside and drill your hole right through the sheet. But we're going to show you the stitching method today because most homeowners don't have that $40 to $50 hole saw that it would, you would buy once and use once in your life and never use it again. All right, so you can see here we've got all of the mosaic river rock tiles down and all of these pieces that have the blue tape on it, these are loose pieces that we've stitched to fill in all of the gaps around the edge. Now again, you could try to just cut sheets, but you know, in this particular case where you ended up with a very small amount that you would need here, you're better off just stitching the rocks in and it'll look more natural that way too. And then what we'll do is we'll take all of these pieces and stick them outside the, t the shower area in the same orientation that we have them in so we know exactly where each one goes. All right, so we're going to start with this trowel size, which is 3 16 inch by 5 30 second. You wanna make sure you don't use a notch that's too big. If you trowel out your lines and if you trowel them too deep, too tall, you're gonna end up with thin set oozing out between all of your rocks and you don't want that. You want them to just set down and embed in a thin layer of this mortar. All right, so we've got our mortar mix here and we're going to just take a bunch and we're gonna smear it around all over the floor here. And we're going to key it in. Now keying it in means you just lay it a reasonably thin layer down, kind of thin like this. And we're going to make it about a maybe eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch thick. And then we'll come by and trowel it with these lines and we'll make our groove lines here like this. Keying it in first is very important because it makes sure that your new mortar sticks down to the old base. We're in luck here because we, this is the same mortar we used yesterday to, to do the skim coat. So it will already stick nice. Don't do the curve like this. I see all of these clowns on these DIY shows, all these alleged flooring experts that go like this in a curve. That's not the way you want to do it. They all got to be parallel. Otherwise the ear won't force its way out of the end and your lines won't settle down. They all have to mash down afterward. See, so just take your time, make sure you've got it right. You're not in a race. You're just trying to get a nice even coating down first before we trowel it. And I'm only gonna do enough to do like the first row of sheets here at first, right? So it's so important to get that keyed layer down there. And so, cause you can see, you'll see some little spots where, see right there where we kept going over it and it wasn't covering it. That's why keying it in is so important to make sure that you get that coverage there. Now that it's covered, now we can do our trowel lines. And you know what, for this small area, I don't care. It's easier to just go like that with the narrow side, who cares? It takes you twice as long, big whoop. And just try to remove any of the, wherever you see any big clumps, you just wanna remove those out of the way. And we will start with our first sheet. And what I always like to do here is lay it towards the wall first. It's a little tricky because they're floppy. They don't wanna cooperate. So you wanna lay it towards the wall first like that and just let it set down itself. Then once it's down, you can deal with the orientation of where you want it to be. Now, afterwards, we're gonna come back and we're going to press down on it with our, you can also do it like this. Some people prefer to do it this way. A wood block is fine also. I just try to keep it smaller in scope and size because remember, the floor is curved. I would have something no wider than my hand actually doing this. But you just wanna make sure as you push it down that you can see how this, the mortar is wanting to come up in between these rocks. So you want to push it down to the, fat, to the point that no more of the mortar can ooze up through. Let's get all your sheets in because this is the time to make adjustments to them, to move them around before it sets up. I mean, you have plenty of time for the most part, but you just want to make sure, you know? Okay. So now we're, we're just stitching in the little rocks. We embed them in there nicely, make sure they mush down. If they're right along the edge, I try to make sure that we're kind of starting to slope a little bit to make sure that any water that ends up there will start heading downward. And it usually happens like this near the end that you're gonna end up with thin set kind of bunched up around here. So I usually like to get a Q-tip after I'm done while it's still just a little bit uh, mushy and try to scoop some out of here. 
It's a lot easier to do it now when it's wet than when it's dry. But it really flakes out easier once it's started to set up a little bit. So now we've spread enough thin set to do these last two pieces here. And let's make sure that we've got this in the right orientation. You get it right there. Then we'll go ahead and lay down the last sheet. Set down into place, into their final resting place. So sometimes we'll push it down flat with this too. You want to really make sure you push these down and make sure you feel them oozing down in and settling in to the mortar. You don't want them just sitting on top. You want the mortar to come up a little bit and surround them to the point that we can just, you know, clean out some of these areas a little bit if we need to. That's about it. That's all you want to see up there. Okay, so now we've let these tiles dry overnight. We've come in the next day. And now our job is to use our little tools here. These are my implements of destruction. And we're going to come in between all of these river rocks here with our tools and start just removing all of the excess chunks of the mortar, the thin set, and wherever it's sticking up above the, the tiles or anything. Even though we wiped them down last night, it's pretty hard when you're wiping down river rocks like this, um, you just end up smearing around some of the, the thin set anyway. So now that it's dry, we'll be able to come back and, and get the rest of it off. Because when we're done, this sh these should feel nice and smooth all over. And they'll be all cleaned out in the middle here because you want your grout to go down. And, and especially, you'll run into this problem along the edges here, where you can see that, that a lot of the thin set tends to ooze up in between and come up against near the wall here, like you see. And then also in other areas like over here, where you can see we have a couple of little chunks of it sticking up on top of the tiles, we'll wipe those off. And then you've got some up here that's worked its way in between some of these river rocks and we just have to chisel those down a little bit. So you probably spend about at least a half hour or so getting in, in between all of the, the tiles here. And you wanna be very careful, you know. So I use a couple of different tools. I like to use my awl. I like to give it my awl, as I say. And it's, you're, it's a great tool because you can hold it just like a screwdriver and just kind of dig around in there without damaging the tiles. You want to be very careful. You, know, you don't want to force things. But you just want to dig around a little bit and find those little... Yeah, um, actually, those are uh, stalagmites if they come up off the floor, right? So yeah, we're going to get rid of all these stalagmites. All right, so what we're going to do in this area right here is, this is kind of a problem zone because you had a lot of the thin set that oozed up. Even though uh, the homeowner came in about an hour later and uh, so we directed them to get Q-tips and come in through all of this area, but sometimes it's hard to get every little bit. So getting doing this with Q-tips when it's still wet is the best way to get most of it, but you'll still end up with little spots every now and then. You just come in and dig around a little bit. And that's why I like using this Torx. I don't use this for anything else. But this is sometimes my Torx drivers have a lot of texture on the tip, which really allows me to dig down and deep. Okay, now sometimes you can come in with your hammer just to give it a couple of light love taps. Nothing big and heavy. You just want to try to break up some of that. See how it comes off in nice manageable chunks there. So you know, come in here and just give it a couple of taps there. Chisel up some of that. See, that just breaks it right up. That I can do by hand right there. That's all you want to do is just loosen them up, vacuum them out. And we just take our scouring sponge here and we dampen it and we go around and rub all the tops of all of these river rocks and we want to make sure it feels nice and smooth afterwards that there's no more little chunks and pieces of cement that may have dried on there 
All right, so now we are at the point where we can start to seal this river rock. And there's two different types of sealer you can use. We're using the enhanced sealer, or you can use a regular sealer. The enhanced sealer will add a little bit of contrast. It brings out the grain and makes the colors a little bit more vivid than what they are now. They look kind of chalky-ish now. So you'll see, we'll paint one half of it and we'll show you. And it's very simple, we just pour it into the little tray here and we have a little roller that we'll use to roll it. And then we'll use the paintbrush to get in on the sides because you want to make sure you get, you get the sides of your river rock. Because the whole purpose of sealing it right now is to prevent the grout from leaching in to the river rock when you're grouting. Because if you don't seal it and wait the full two to three days like the bottle says, you run the risk that your grout is going to leach into each of these river rocks and that would be very bad. So I'll start back in the corner here. I like to cut in with a brush right near the edge just so I don't get any on the walls. It's just like when you're painting. So you can see right off the bat here how much it's, it's uh, making the colors look a little bit more saturated. It's kind of injecting some life into it, giving it new vivid colors. See? river rocks and trying to coat the sides of them as well. well. You can see there the difference with the enhanced sealer on the left compared to nothing on the right. So I actually like going through the enhanced type. And pretty much you only need to do one coating unless you want even more enhancement and contrast and saturated colors, but I don't think you need it. You really don't want to overdo it. And there you can see it's all done now. The river rocks are nicely sealed and we just have to let it soak in for about 20 minutes. And it's so important that after that 20 minute period is up, we have to go back with a dry cloth and wipe it off. You can't leave any residue behind on it because it'll dry and be sticky kind of thing and maybe a little bit of gooiness and you'll, you'll have a really tough time getting it off later on. All right, so here we're just wiping it off. It should feel reasonably dry to the touch. You just don't want any excessive amounts of the excess material left on the tile. Okay, now I am using MAPE's Ultra Color Plus FA, which stands for fine aggregate. This is neither a sanded nor an unsanded grout. This has its own sealer built into it. In fact, MAPE even tells you in the instructions for this grout on the bag to only use water because it has the sealer built into it. Now this is a fast setting grout. So I'm only mixing about half a bag right now to start because the whole bag will set up on you inside the bucket in probably 45 minutes at the most. Okay, okay now that we have the grout mixed, we really gotta get moving on this because you'll be lucky to get 20 minutes out of this bucket. So what I do is I'll just get it out there on the ground. And when you're applying it with a grout float, what I like to do is as you're applying it, you come at a low angle like this. You just kind of want to coat the floor initially, right? And then after you've got it in there, then you want to come back at about a 45 degree angle at a steeper angle and scrape it all off. Now we're only going to do a small section here because we want to make sure we'll be able to clean the grout off of the surface. Now a lot of times, especially when you're working with river rock and near the wall, I just really like to use my gloves and I like to get my hands, get down there and get dirty with it, you know. That way I can be one with the tile, I can sort of feel how the grout line should be. Okay, so we're just starting to scrape off the grout here using the 45 degree angle to get as much off as we can and now we're going to use our sponge with the bucket of water so you don't want your sponge to be too wet either so what I usually do is I do one side like this and then I flip to the other side. Then I do one edge. Then I do the other edge. 
And then I have the two smaller edges, one edge there and one edge there. So I've now used sponge exactly all six times and you don't keep going back and forth with it. You, you have to go and rinse it out then. And of course, this first washing isn't going to look perfect and it's going to haze over again too because you can't just keep on wiping a sponge over it and getting more and more mud. You're basically spreading more of the mud around. So you have to sort of wait till it sets up a bit and we'll come back in a little while and try to hit it again with maybe just a very lightly damp sponge. Now you can see we finally completed the grout. So here we're just finishing up the initial washing of the tiles, flipping the sponge each time we do a wipe. You do a wipe and then flip and then wipe and then flip using all six edges of the sponge. So now we're going to let this dry for about an hour or so. What we're going to do now is, is we're going to take our water buckets outside and refill them up with brand new clear water. And we'll come back after about an hour or so after it's set up and starting to dry pretty good. And we'll just get a very lightly damp sponge and just wipe across the top of the tiles again, just to make sure we can get off as much of the haze as we can now. The more grout you can remove off the top of your tiles now when it's still somewhat moist and pliable, the easier your job will be because you won't be scrubbing as much later. And then once it's dried and cured, we will come back with a dry cloth towel, a microfiber towel, and just kind of buff along the top. Okay, so now you can see we've gotten it pretty clean and each time we come up with the sponge now, there's no grout residue on there like before. So now all we're doing is just cleaning the haze off without affecting the grout. Because the grout has had time to set up a little bit now and it should be drier, but we're trying not to use a, a super wet sponge, just damp enough to wipe the haze off of the tile. So this will make our job a lot easier for us once it dries after a few hours and we can come by with our microfiber cloth and just give it a good wipe down. Here we are on the next day and now we have our microfiber cloth and since it has those nice sharp cones we're going to just go around and buff all of these and make sure we get all of the every little bit of haze off of here. And remember, like I said, the reason why we're using the microfiber is it has those nice cones that dig in and help remove the haze nicely for you. Now, if you don't have any microfiber cloths, you can, of course, use the terry cloth towels. Those do a good job, too. But as you look at it close up, you can see they're not as good and pointed and as organized as the microfiber cloths are. see right here I can feel it that's residue there that's grout residue there that's some right there okay. so we'll take our cloth here and we'll start at this first spot here and you just want to make sure it's gone and you'll feel it actually as you're rubbing it and doing it with your fingernail through there you'll feel it get smoother and Got to remove some of this old caulking there and just get it out of the way. See, then you just want to get all of this off here. Get all as much of the old stuff out as you can. And it usually comes out fairly easy. Just use the right tool. There's grout removal tools that you can use, grout scrapers. That'll get in there and remove all of this. Okay, so now it's time to add our silicone caulking here to all of the corners. And you know, a lot of times we use the word caulking very loosely. Um, this isn't really caulk. You're not supposed to use caulk in wet areas like bathrooms and showers and kitchen counters and all that. We prefer to use silicone. So what we're actually using here today is a sanded siliconized acrylic caulk. As you can see here in the container, it says this is Caracalk S. And what this is, is it's a sanded siliconized caulk, which is better for doing this type of thing because I believe the sand gives it more strength and I believe it makes it more impervious. The reason why we're using silicone instead of regular latex caulk, which you never want to use, is latex caulk will dry and crack. 
And if you have dry, cracking caulk in anywhere in your shower, you'll know it was done wrong by the builder. And silicone will not shrink or crack. We're going to apply it here with our dripless caulking gun. And when we're done, we're going to tool it down here. This is my favorite. I've been using this kit for years. This is the Kramer Fugi kit here. And what this is, it's a profiling kit that allows you to profile your silicone a lot more accurately. And this one's made in Germany, so I only buy this particular. Now you can already see what a bad job the builder did here building the shower originally because see this corner here, it's waving all over the place. And I have lippage here and lippage here and then it drops back down on there. So that's going to be a challenge to try to make a good straight bead going all the way up. That's why it's so important tiling showers to make sure you have that perfect 90 degree wall that you can stick your carpenter square here and it should smack both walls. And then this is another thing here that annoys me about builders when they tile. Why do they only tile halfway up? Is it really too much trouble to go the extra 18 inches and tile up to the ceiling like it's supposed to be? That's how I always tile it. Yeah, so make sure when you tile you go all the way up. To me there's no excuse for this. Why they don't tile at least even up to here, okay? But come on, all the way up is where you're supposed to go. Because now they're leaving the drywall exposed and you're bound to get leaks and spraybacks and stuff over the years that's going to eat into the drywall and kill your drywall. I bet a lot of you have mold and stains right here around your shower head, don't you? So now we're going to take our tube of silicone and we want to cut off the smallest opening we can get and still get a decent bead out. I'm going to shoot for an eighth of an inch opening. So I'm going to stick my tube in here, cut it at a little bit of an angle. So that's pretty good. That'll give us about an eighth of an inch bead. Poke the plastic in here. It's sealed, right? And a lot of people forget that and they put their tube in there and wonder, well, how come nothing's coming out? I'm squeezing hard, nothing's coming out. You want to see it come back out on your stick and feel it. So you can see it better from below. See the wedge? See where the light's coming in, where the wedge is there? Do you want that size? Do you want that size? Is that size better? This one's real tiny. I don't even think I like that one. That might not even work because of the grout that's in the corner here. The builder used grout, which is inappropriate. You're not supposed to grout the corners. You're supposed to use the silicone. Okay, so let me just give you a warning about working with silicone here. You have about five minutes before it starts to set up a little bit that it won't be as easy to tool down. So don't do the whole shower at once. I usually do one whole corner all the way down to the floor at once. And then I come in quickly thereafter. You don't take any breaks or anything. You just come in right after and just start tooling down. And then when you come back to tool it, you know, you could be spending a couple of minutes going all the way down, tooling it, wiping off your thing each time. I usually wipe it off every couple of feet because to get all of the excess off of here so it doesn't keep plowing onto the wall. And you just go scrape, wipe, scrape, wipe, scrape, wipe. Okay, so the idea is to just keep it right in the corner there Make sure that the silicone stays right in the corner. And if you can, you know, avoid things like that happening. If that happens, you stop and immediately wipe it off. Keep that 45 degree angle pointed right in there and let the silicone go in there. Try to make a nice even bead like this, see, as you go down the wall. So I switched to the blue one. I think the other one was too caked up with debris. So if we just come in like this, see. See how it's coming off a lot better now, tooling down much nicer and smoother there. We're coming back on it now with our tool, our Kramer Fugi tool. I love this thing. This thing does such a smooth job in these corners for us. Whenever you start collecting up a lot like that, that's the time to wipe it. Remember what I said, scrape, wipe, scrape, wipe. So I should always be thinking. And there's every now and then you come and smooth out a little section there if you have to. And we'll come by and do a second pass in a second once all of the once all of the silicone has been scraped off of there. See, coming in nice and smooth, nice and smooth there. And we'll come back and hit this area here now. See, just a little bit at a time is all you got to do. You're not in a race. You want it to be done perfect. Okay, now on this corner, it's a good thing we're doing it too because over the years they've collected up some orange stains here along the corner because remember, the builder filled this corner with grout, which is a big no-no because grout sucks up all that stuff and grout cracks. Um, that's why I always use silicone in the corners because silicone does not crack. Always make sure you start with a clean tip again for the next one. And remember, you have five minutes before they start setting up and sometimes it might even be quicker. 
So we're going to just take one minute to go down the wall here with our bead of silicone. And then we'll try to get the other one done. We'll try to tool it down within one or two minutes. To get that reasonably constant thick bead. We have our profile set to the right corner. And let's start going down the wall with it. Scrape, wipe, scrape, wipe. We're coming back on it now with our tool, our Kramer Fugi tool. I love this thing. This thing does such a smooth job in these corners for us. Whenever you start collecting up a lot like that, that's the time to wipe it. Remember what I said, scrape, wipe, scrape, wipe. And we'll come by and do a second pass in a second once all of the, once all of the silicone has been scraped off of there, see? Coming in nice and smooth, nice and smooth there. Okay, now we're going to caulk along the bottom of the floor, and this is where it's gonna be the most challenging for you. So I want you to only do a small section at a time, maybe a foot or two across the floor. And I'll tell you why, because when you, when you go to tool, look what's happening across all of these river rocks. They're different heights, so you're gonna bump up and down and up and down, and it's just gonna be very awkward getting in a nice straight bead through all of these rocks, especially this one, which is even much thicker than the surrounding rocks around it. So here we go in the corner. And I think in the corner, I'm gonna make sure I go a little thicker than I normally go, because we can always scrape off the excess, but we wanna make sure there's enough there that we can tool it down. I might have to come back here and hit this one a little bit more. And that's all you need to do, really, for the first section. Now, let's see if we want to go with this here. And you want to wipe frequently because it's going to get on the river rock. Just make sure it's nice and straight and you come right along the edge of the bead. I try not to really touch the bead, but I just want to make sure I'm cleaning off the river rocks. Okay, now we'll start the next section over here. Some areas are going to be easier than others. You can see how it just goes up and down and up and down there. And you can see how it's snow plowing up the wall, so that's how you know when to stop to wipe it off and come back and hit it again to remove all of the residue that went up the wall. That's why we don't just tool it once. We tool it once, wipe off, and tool it again. And then any areas we miss, we're gonna come back and hit it with our finger just on the outside of it, just to flatten it down Wipe it off the rocks, get it out of the way. Okay, now we're going to do here up the curb. And on the inside here, we're going to use the wider part of the, the tool shape here. Just to make sure we have good solid coverage around that big crack there. See that? Then up top, I'll go with the smaller bead right there, the smaller shape on the tool. See that? And we'll just kind of round it out a bit. Then you just have to keep playing with it there. Do you get it looking nice and smooth? There's lippage right there. See that? How it got snagged on it? The builder just did a terrible job here getting these tiles level. I'm going to put the new drain in and secure it down now. 
and make sure we know right where our screw holes are because I have a feeling these are going to be too short. This manufacturer is an idiot. They give you screws that are barely a quarter of an inch long and that's just not enough. See now look at this. This is what I what I mean, okay? Now take a look at this screw here and you tell me what Einstein ever thought that this, maybe it's a quarter of an inch long screw, but who thought this was ever going to be enough when you've already got a huge countersink there that's going to take up most of that quarter of an inch and now you've got to start grabbing some threads down there which you're not going to grab with this length of screw. And this is down all the way, this plate is down just where the old plate was. So, you know, these manufacturers are just, they're just unbelievable, they just don't think. They need to give you like a half inch screw. Okay, so now that we have completed all of the installation of the silicone here, up the wall there and everything, we decided we're going to focus our attention on this grout here on the outside corner of the tub. So you can see how filthy that is right there. So we're going to clean up this floor here and add a nice thick bead of it along the bottom of the floor there and really make it look nice. And then we're going to add some up the wall here to match what we did along the top of the curb. We'll just make this look nice and clean. for your bathroom renovations. Yeah, not many people have this kind of river rock floor, so it looks really unique. When people come in and see your house, they're like, wow, that looks awesome. And if you like this video so far, if you found this informational, hey, would you do us a favor and give us a thumbs up down below that tells us that you like us? And man, look, if you're not subscribed to us, Look at all of these different videos that we put up for you all the time and uh, lots of great videos on remodeling your homes and your kitchens and your bathrooms and tiling and engineering disasters like we showed you here the other day with this plumbing fail. So make sure if you're not subscribed that you click on that subscribe button and click the little gray bell icon next to it. That will tell YouTube to alert you whenever we upload a new video. Well, that's it for this one, folks. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you on the next one.